Hello again and welcome to another episode of the 5 minute series dedicated to the Nemesis platform. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, CSV import and how to import data into your platform. If you remember in episode 1 we did an initialization which uh, consisted of uh, importing, uh, in applying an SQL schema, importing some CSV files and then synchronizing the catalogs, the catalog versions. So um, to import sample data uh, all you have to do is write one of these CSV files and put it in uh, in this folder src main resources meta import data uh, under under import data we have subfolders uh, each one is for a specific website that that we have and one common that contains CSV files uh, which is common for for all the websites so in episode one, we generated uh, four websites uh, out, uh, out of here of the from start.nemesis.io. One was for B2C commerce, one was for CMS, one for telco and, and one for B2B. So um, according to this setup, now we have four um, subfolders here, one for B2B, B2C, CMS and telco. And my project uh, word um, is, it comes from um, our setup because we, we use the my project setup, uh, the, the my project word. So now let's talk about a little bit more about the CSV files themselves. So each CSV file contains a lot of different input blocks. Each input block starts with uh, a, a JPA keyword such as merge, insert, remove, um, and then it's followed by a fully qualified name of uh, of an entity of a JPA entity that we would like to insert, remove, or or merge. And uh, then followed by comma is separated all the attributes that we would like to specify. So code, name, another name, another name, etc. And further down on each line, we specify the values for, for, these, um, for these attributes. Each attribute after, after the, the declaration of the attribute has these square brackets where we can uh, define different um, number of input processors. So these input processors are actually taking the input from the line below and passing it through these input processors and then producing some output that will be set as an attribute value. Uh, these input processors could be uh, piped. So some of them could be uh, single values such as ID or locale equals EN, specifying that the, the value below will be um, uh, used as, as an English locale but some of them can also be piped. So let's uh, have a look here. What we have is a split equals the pipe symbol and then semicolon equal attribute equals code. So this actually means that uh, whatever value we find underneath, um, the, uh, underneath this uh, attribute will be split using the pipe symbol. Uh, semicolon separates two or more input processors. And now the second input processor begins the second input processor is attribute equals code. So the value that we have underneath will be split using the pipe symbol and each one of these will be passed as an input to the second uh, uh, input processor. And then we are going to try to find uh, a, a, a user group uh, in the database which has code, uh, whatever we have underneath. So um, let's, let's imagine that the values here were A, B um, and C. What, um, what, what, what this uh, input processor chain of input processors would do is it would split them um, by the pipe symbol so it will, it will find uh, a string, a list of strings which is uh, of size 3. Uh, the values will be A, B and C and each one of these will be uh, passed as um, as an input to the second and it will try to find a, a user group in the database uh, with code equals A, a user group with code equals B and a user, code, uh, user group with code equals C and finally we'll have a list of three user groups and those list of three user groups will be uh, we will try to assign to uh, supergroups. So that's pretty much it. It's really powerful. We have more than 50 different input processors that you can chain and you can uh, um, customize uh, and you can use to import your um, uh, CSV files and such in such a way that and it allows you to very quickly um, initialize your system and populate with some sample data. 
Furthermore, these CSVs can be uh, imported at runtime. After your system has started, you don't have to always initialize the system or input, uh, Im import some CSVs uh, during startup. You could always do that. You can also do that after startup uh, during runtime. So that's pretty much it for today. Let's wrap it up and I'll see you guys tomorrow.